Hallo, I'm Satoshi Yamamoto. Welcome back to my time bench. Um, today, I'd like to do another uh, tribute tie for Mr. Jack Garside, which I've been doing past several years. Um, uh, I'd like to do uh, his most famous and well known for uh, the Pheasant Hopper. I'd say finally. Um, it took me a while. Um, to master this pattern and then uh, fish with it. Um, this book, uh, I think uh, you can find, you can still find, you know, uh, somewhere, uh, probably his website uh, to get started with. Um, there's a back, uh, background story there and a step by step. And also, there are two, two uh, key factors of this pattern, uh, which is this. Uh, Number one is a pheasant wing, and they say uh, how to make a nice uh, uh, deer hair head. So um, uh, again, this book really helped me, and then uh, uh, now I'm finally uh, comfortable to uh, work on it. And then um, this became uh, one of my uh, most, uh, I'd say, I, I can say that not one knob. This is my uh, by far the most favorite. Um, and then the most productive hopper pattern for me. Yeah, um, there's no exaggeration for that. Um, that's just an amazing fly once I mastered. Okay, uh, first let's, uh, I kind of, I went through uh, first several patterns. Uh, a moose, moose here for, for the tail. And then uh, the body is just uh, four strands yarn. I, I separate into two and just uh, wrap around. And then um, make a nice uh, cylinder looking, you know, um, uh, uh, taper. Then if I use, you know, if I use an orange, it's gonna be like a salmon fly. And if I use a, a black, it's more like a cricket, which I'd like to show you towards the end. And then um, uh, ribbing is a hako, either grizzly or brown. Uh, uh, both works dry fly hackle. I use uh, the I pick I pick up one from the very end, you know, which I probably never use, you know, like a very end here, you know, and um, which I never use for regular dry fly. And then uh, just clip off, uh, tapered on the side like this way, this way, and the bottom as such, like this way, and then the top just cut flat. And then this is under wing, just a deer here. And then, okay, this um, this is really uh, straightforward. Uh, this is a pheasant um, um, placard, uh, placard any any pheasant feathers. You know, from a, you can find a various uh, colors from a ring neck. You know, um, uh, various colors and sizes from a, uh, you know ring neck. You know, uh, pheasant. Uh, the uh, uh, cock, you know, male male bird, and then uh, he says originally he used a cement here and just sweep through to make it uh, uh, practically unbreakable, you know, uh, feather, you know, it doesn't break by just, you know, catching one or two fish, and this fish catch catches a lot of fish, and then. Uh, of course, it may break eventually by uh, being chewed off by trout, but it uh, still catches a fly. And in my case, I use this uh, polyurethane. Uh, it's dirty, but it's still not expired. And I use this uh, latex glove on my both hands, and then um, with my uh, latex, you know, glove hands, I just yeah sweep through, and I make as uh, he suggests in the instruction. Um, um just make um lots of them all at the same time you know one one and then uh, when i was amateur um just to make you know one or two or three or maybe f five or six you know most you know uh it seems very time consuming that's why i didn't but um uh, now i got plenty of time and then uh, uh, reason to tie it uh, by a dozen uh or more then um um, so that's why that's one one of the reasons I start to uh, I, I I was able to start uh, this pattern and then I'm sure this uh, brown works too. Uh, but then again, uh, let's try this one. Uh, for more details about uh, uh, 
pheasant, wing neck pheasant skin and the feathers. Uh, you can find uh, yeah on this book and also the uh, his uh, website. And then uh, okay, now uh, this feather, this nicely cemented you know modified feather, nicely wrap this entire um, under wing to the body and reaching just the tail here. And then uh, I'm using a thread uh, dumbbell six saw. Uh, dumbbell six saw. This happens to be olive. And then this is very important towards the end for the next uh, the last procedure here. So it's nicely cupping here as you can see. And uh, you can even add a couple more turns so it doesn't move along. Okay. Next procedure is a deer here. And I just use a, a mule deer here. I comb off this um, um, under fur, and then I'm gonna stack them. I stack in my other other table here. shake my uh, time bench just measure about like that and uh, cut the button even and then as uh, he suggested in, his, in the instruction start tying from the far end keep pinching here then I pull this thread toward me twice and then uh, see it's not rolling around then the next clump of the kicker okay Just um, uh, same length transfer uh, between your hands, and now I'm keep pinching with my material material hand, and then uh, my thread is going to pull push away from me. Okay, now make so it doesn't kind of roll along, and then uh, see I can still see the uh, my uh, kickers. Uh, Left and the right kickers are not mixed up, nicely separated. And then uh, with this uh, butt end, uh, I think this is a really important uh, um, to make a nice transition for the uh, next procedure. And eventually the head, I just with a twist, you know, roaring around. I want I want these uh, butt end to kind of stand up um, nicely here. Okay. And then um, next and the last procedure towards the end is uh, uh, deer hair head, and then uh, it's technically uh, uh, not technically. I'm sorry. Um, we often call it, you know, spinning the deer hair, but uh, um, as he says here, uh, turning the deer hair into hako. That's that's a uh, very good concept, and then. Um, uh, this indeed his theory and method which I try to demonstrate uh, really helps me to um, um, achieve this pattern of course and any other deer hair pattern such as a Madara Mino or any other um, you know deer hair, hair, deer hair uh, you know um, deer hair head you know uh, scalping pattern and um, okay First, I just cramp about is about a pencil size, maybe in a smaller uh, pencil size it would be the most, I think. I'd like to say because uh, 
more than that, I think it's too 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 bulky to work with. Okay, and then uh, too layer too thin, too small a clump. Um, it's it's hard to achieve a nice result. So okay, I'm holding the kind of middle here, and I trim the tip, even tip, and uh, this a uh, butt end. Our bottom end is facing, uh, facing this uh, tail. Alright, this is very important. So I pinch here. Okay. One, two, three soft loops. And now I let everything go here. And then, uh, and then uh, I, I do again. When I go, after I let, let everything go, my thread is going, but uh, actually, proceeds backward one, two patterns. Then now uh, everything is gonna stand up, and then uh, let me go through here. Now I'm going to forward, uh, going among the uh, uh, hair. I'm sure, without looking from the uh, uh, front, my hair is uh, surrounding the hook shank 360. You know, nicely round. So, okay. Okay, let's do it again. Just about a... I pluck just about the same amount. Um, oh, by the way, this is a size 4. Daiwiki 700. Um, Daiwiki 700 streamer hook. So... Uh, I have learned this this size of a hook. I usually make a three three uh, cramps, you know, three spins, and then uh, okay again I'm um, holding the butt end here, and then uh, okay one, two, three, and now I let everything go, and then the, my thread proceeds backward towards the tail. One, two. And now I'm coming back forward in front of this clump. Among these are here. Again, it's nicely surrounding the hook shank 360. And then it seems a bit tight, but I, I'm sure I can do another uh, clump. Uh, I admit it's slightly less. So this technique. Uh, Like anybody else, I have tried, you uh, know, uh, uh, what what whatever whatever it said in the you know each book or each author says. But uh, this method is by far uh, produces the best res best deer hair results. Again, for like uh, this pattern, Madura Mino, and then uh, any deer hair scalping pattern. Okay, again, one two, three, and I let everything go, spin, make sure it's, um, it's not covering there, now I'm going to proceed forward among uh, this uh, feather, come forward, we finish, If you are afraid of, you know, you can make one more round of the uh, we finish, but I'm sure it's okay. Yeah, yes, there are a bunch of lots of feathers uh, here to work with, and then uh, I don't uh, trim flat and then the uh, up, upper side of the shank is slightly wider than the bottom. I don't have time to work on uh, trim here. Um, in this uh, video, but uh, down right, it should be looking like this, like that, and the, from the each side, and then uh, uh, this is tied with a black body, black body, and then the black deer hair. Now this one has an indicator. This is the uh, cricket. This indicator really helps. And then um, this is another hopper, but the yellow, 
yellow deer here same results i really like this one this one produces me a lot of light a lot of fish and this is one size smaller but the olive here and then um um this 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 pattern uh it's just amazing to me um you know the cutthroat in my area especially you know uh, notoriously famous uh, is stream streams uh, like a soda butte you know or soda butte creek lama lama river uh, or anywhere over there in uh, yellowstone river yellowstone park i'm sorry uh you know heavily fished but uh, even though the heavily fished cutthroat um, come up on this you know this uh, hot pepper uh, without any doubt you know and then uh, just come and sip it this pattern sips uh, i'm sorry <laughs> sits sits on the water solo yet very visible to me and then uh, cutthroat indeed just come and sip it you know this is a very very great fly and i hope uh, i did right and then um, um keep tying this fly and then uh, um you know uh, i'm sure this is going to produce uh, uh, many more trout from now on so uh, okay, uh, thank you for watching.